Welcome back to my channel, everyone. Three tips here. And what I've got is I've got some carrot scrap gold here that I've removed all the stones, all the catches, all the non gold material has been mechanically taken from these two bins of carrot scrap. And what I do is I save the catches here and uh, put them in this little container and then I throw these in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner and then I save them in this jar here as a kind of offline savings account these are all the catches and little earrings and things that I'm gonna set aside and save for myself and I'll just put them in this little jar right here and keep these get this to zero take the 14k material first and put it right in the melt dish here we go 143.7 grams okay I'm gonna record that over here 14k 143 point looks like six grams now the 10k we'll go ahead and add that right in tear the scale to zero again I've cleaned all of this material out I have verified that each piece is actually carrot gold and not gold filled or gold plated and it looks like we've got 90.5 grams of 10k for the 14k we multiply 143.6 times 1.265 and we get a total of 181.6 for the 10k we multiply by 0.635 so we've got 90.5 times 0.635 we're gonna need 57.4 grams all right, this is zero nine three two hundred thirty nine point zero grams of sterling silver. That's how much we're going to need to import this amount of gold. Our calculations call for two hundred thirty nine grams of sterling silver. I've weighed out 240 grams on our scale so this is the amount of silver that we'll need to import this amount of carrot scrap okay here we go we're gonna start melting the gold so that we can uh, import it with silver Importing means alloying enough silver to create a 25% gold alloy from our carrot scrap. What I'm doing here is called inquartation. I'm adding silver to the carrot scrap. Once I get the carrot scrap molten, I add the pieces of sterling silver. Sterling silver does not have to be used here. Clean copper can be used to do do this in quartation but I refine silver also so I use silver to do the in quartation once the uh, carrot of the gold is reduced down to about 25% or 6k then and only then the nitric acid will be able to penetrate completely into each of those pieces of imported gold we're gonna pour off the tap water and get our gold out of our uh, container here I've got a two liter beaker and what I'll do is transfer the gold now into this 
two liter beaker carefully. Make sure we don't break the glass. Now we're gonna take some distilled water and uh, rinse our corded gold off to get all the uh, chlorine from the tap water off of there. Here's our uncorded gold, ready for nitric acid treatments. Here is our beautiful uncorded gold. It has a uh, nice iridescent color to it. And what we're gonna do is I've got some used nitric acid from a previous refining. We're gonna add that to the uncorded gold now. see it react immediately as the uh, dilute nitric here that I'm adding begins to dissolve out all the silver and all the base metals out of this encorded gold stick it up on the heat and let it cook okay here I've said it before and I'll say it again people will ask, why did he add silver to the gold? And the reason is, is we lower the gold concentration down to around 25%, and then the nitric acid can penetrate that encorded gold completely. That was about a uh, 40 minute time lapse. And now what we'll do is we're gonna take our silver bearing solution in here and we're going to rinse it into our silver jar notice that this jar is full of silver and what it'll do in here is this solution may is going to contain a lot of silver but it may also contain a little bit of excess nitric acid and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and uh, consume the excess nitric acid that's in this solution with the silver that's in this jar. Let me rinse the rest of this out of here now. few particles of gold to go over into the silver jar and that's okay is add some distilled water a couple hundred milliliters or so I'm going to add an equal amount of nitric acid this is 68 to 70 percent nitric Pour it right on in. Should get a pretty vigorous reaction again as soon as we add that acid. All right, this is nitric acid treatment number two. This is about a 30 minute time lapse, and you'll notice as the reaction proceeds, fume production will start to uh, decrease here and eventually it'll lighten up and let us know when all the nitric acid has been reacted with the silver and the base metals in that recorded gold. Now we're gonna pour this second nitric boil off into the silver jar and uh, what I'll do is I'll keep adding fresh nitric acid and fresh distilled water until we get all of the silver and base metals pulled out of this encorded gold and we'll keep doing this over and over until we get a solution it is absolutely clear and colorless. Adding some more distilled water. 
and then some more nitric acid and we'll keep doing these uh, dilute nitric boils till we get all the silver and base metals out of our encoded gold it's number three this third nitric boil is complete as we progress through these series of nitric boils what happens is the amount of silver in this solution decreases and the amount of nitric free nitric available increases so I've added some uh, some uh, sterling silver in here you'll see that uh, we're gonna get quite a bit of a reaction as I pour this solution on to those pieces of sterling silver in there and that's because we have quite a bit of free nitric available in here and get the rest of this rinsed off real good try to rinse as much of the blue out of there as I can now we'll set this back up on the heat I'm gonna add some more distilled water and some more nitric acid and we'll continue with nitric acid boil number four this fourth nitric boil is complete now if you notice there's no fumes as stated earlier as these uh, nitric boils progress there will be less and less silver in here and more and more nitric acid available to react with the silver here in the silver jar you'll notice that the uh, pieces of gold are uh, looking nice and brown now put this back up on the heat I'm gonna add some distilled water this fifth nitric boil should do the trick for us we want to keep boiling until we get a colorless solution put the lid back on and let this continue to react This fifth nitric acid boil is complete. What I'm gonna do now is gonna go ahead and get set up here to uh, capture this nitric acid in this flask here. This nitric acid will have uh, the ability to dissolve metals in a future refining. So I wanna save it. If you remember at the beginning of the video, I used this nitric acid to start this refining. So what we'll do is we'll use this used nitric acid in another refining, in a future refining, to do the first nitric acid boil in the next refining that I do. All right, here we go. We're gonna add some more distilled water and some more nitric acid and this will be nitric acid boil number six this is our sixth nitric boil as you can see there's still a little bit of color so what we're going to do is do a seventh nitric acid boil until we get a colorless solution before i proceed i've got some more silver that I burnt here I'm gonna add it to this uh, my silver jar I've got to make some room in my used nitric bottles I'm gonna pour this solution into the silver jar and this is gonna have a high concentration of nitric acid in it but everything's cold so it should be okay and shouldn't boil I over. mean I've cleaned these off 
in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. So we'll just hit them lightly with some flame. I will add these to the silver jar. And again, I'm putting silver in here to consume the excess nitric acid that's in the solution that I'm pouring off into my silver jar. Okay, let's pour this hot nitric off now into this funnel. We'll save this nitric acid that I'm pouring off right here. We'll save it for a future refining. I'm going to pour the rest off into my silver jar back here. And we'll uh, let the rest of this nitric that's in this beaker I'm rinsing out get consumed by the silver that's in the silver jar. I'm going to rinse this off real good with some distilled water and we'll pour these rinses off into the silver jar. Alright, I've got the gold rinsed off. Put it back on the heat. I'm going to add some more distilled water. And then we're going to add some more nitric acid and do nitric boil number seven. Nitric boil number seven has been going now for about 20 minutes. If you look at that solution, it's colorless, and that's exactly what we want to see. What I want to talk about is the silver that's in this jar. There's excess pieces of sterling in there to consume all that nitric. Then what I'll do is, is I'll filter this solution once all the nitric is out of it, and I'll add it to a beaker, like this beaker right here. And we put uh, copper in here and cement out the silver out of the solution. See these pieces of copper here? And what happens is the copper will react with the silver and then fall to the bottom of the beaker. This gray powder down here is cement silver. It's about 99% pure. Once all the silver has been cemented out on that copper, I put it in a funnel and rinse all the copper off of it. And then I add it to this bucket and accumulate it. This is about 30 pounds of cement silver here. Then what we'll do is we'll take the cement silver, put it in a crucible. And this is my homemade furnace here. I haven't used it yet, but I'm gonna put it in that crucible melt it up and then we'll pour it in some water and form some impure silver granules about 99 percent pure from this cement silver once we've formed the granules by pouring it in water i come over here and i'll add the uh, impure silver granules into this anode filter basket and we'll pass an electric current through it. And what will happen is the impure silver will dissolve in that anode basket and it will travel through an electrolyte that's inside of this cell and then start plating out as pure elemental silver metal in my silver cell. And then we harvest that pure silver crystal and we can uh, save it or form bars or whatever we want to do with it. Nitric boil number seven is complete. And we've uh, been boiling in there about a half an hour now. So what we'll do is we'll pour off this boiling nitric into a separate container and save it. And uh, the longer we spend here, 
boiling the gold in nitric acid, the fewer problems we'll have in the next step when we go to the refining with aqua regio. All right, I'm gonna rinse off the gold now. Pour those rinses off into the silver jar. Add a little bit of distilled water to the gold now. We'll put this up on the heat and let this boil just a second. This water boil has been going for about 10 minutes. I'm going to pour the boiling water off into the silver jar. There's about a little over three ounces of gold in here. So now what I'm gonna do is add hydrochloric acid. I'm gonna fill it up to the 400 milliliter level. Now I'll add some sulfuric acid to the gold, about a half a milliliter. And what this will do is this will precipitate out any lead that might be present. Going to measure out about 30 milliliters of nitric acid here, and we're going to add that right on in. This will form aqua regia in here, and this will start to dissolve our gold. Put it up on the heat now. All right, this reaction has subsided. As you can see, there's still plenty of uh, gold in there. So what we'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and start adding small doses of nitric acid to get the rest of that gold to dissolve. It's gonna be hot. It's gonna flare up when I add this nitric, so I gotta add it real slow. Adding small doses of nitric acid like this enables me to carefully control the amount of nitric going into the reaction. If done correctly, I'll be able to just dissolve the gold with the right amount of nitric. Then there will be no need to remove excess nitric because there won't be any to remove. All that's left in there is just a few tiny pieces down in the bottom of the beaker. Uh, look down there you'll see they accumulate in the middle of the uh, bottom of the beaker there so what I'm going to do is add just a few more drops of nitric acid to try to get the rest of this gold to go into solution won't take much just a few drops The gold has gone into solution almost completely. I've still got a few little bitty crumbs down at the bottom there, but I'm not gonna go after them crumbs 
and add a whole bunch of excess nitric. If that's gold, I'll get that out of there separately later on. Now I'll add some ice to the solution. Oh, the ice will cool it down and dilute the solution. If there's any silver chloride in here, cooling it down and diluting it like this will cause that silver chloride to come out of solution and then we can filter it out. Right, we're going to add a little bit of water to our solution here. I've got the solution cooled off. Notice that it's turned fairly cloudy. I've got a filter flask set up with a number two medium flow filter in it. And now what we'll do is wet this filter, wait for a vacuum to develop, which we have, and now we'll pour this solution through the filter. If you look at the bottom of the beaker there, you'll notice there's some uh, undissolved pieces of trash when dissolving carrot gold like this for the first time after the inquartation. Chances are high that we'll have some insoluble material. It's not gold. And so I did not add a whole bunch of excess nitric to try to get that stuff to go into solution because it won't go, it's insoluble. Here you'll notice that the solution is cloudy. If you look at the filter, it's loaded up now. So what we'll do is we'll uh, put on a fresh, clean filter flask, and then we'll pour that cloudy solution back through the same filter a second time, and this should clear up that solution nicely. Here you can see the uh difference that it makes passing the solution through the same filter a second time. This will go a long way towards improving the purity of our final product. Notice the clarity of the liquid indicating high purity. I've got a beaker. I'll fill the beaker full of ice to keep the solution cool while we precipitate out the pure gold. Now I'll add the solution to the beaker with the ice in it. The ice is made out of distilled water. We'll get this ready to precipitate out the pure gold. Here's our favorite chemical, sodium metabisulfite. And what we'll do now is start adding spoons of this to our gold solution to get the gold to precipitate out as high purity gold. Here we go. First spoon going in right now. Bang. If you're wondering why hasn't he added anything to kill the excess nitric, the answer is there won't be any excess nitric in here because I used incremental nitric acid dosing. And with that technique, we add just enough nitric acid to just dissolve the gold. Uh, if done properly, 
we won't have to uh, denox our uh, solution before we precipitate the gold because there will be no excess nitric to remove from it. All right, if we had tried to precipitate this gold and there was a whole bunch of excess nitric in there, we'd be having all kind of problems right now with the gold wanting to go back in solution, creating a bunch of heat and fumes. And as you can see by that Stannis test, we've got all the gold to drop out of solution now. If we were going to stamp this up and sell it to an individual, I would do a minimum of two refinings. But this is going to a big refiner that I deal with. So I think we're going to be able to get by with just a single refining. Gold's been allowed to settle for about an hour now. And what we'll do is we'll pour off this waste solution into this container and save it. It may have traces of precious metals, a little bit of gold to go over with the pour here. And we'll add this to the stock pot and recover any precious metals, traces of precious metals that this waste solution may contain. All right, we've got all the waste solution poured off of here. Now I'm gonna do multiple hydrochloric acid rinses and get all the chemicals rinsed off of here before we try to melt this up into a nice bar. Now I've got some boiling tap water, or distilled water rather, here. And we'll do multiple rinses with boiling distilled water to try to get all the rest of the chemicals rinsed off of this pure gold. It's looking real good there. Here we go. I've got a melt dish here. I'm going to try to get this gold down into our melt dish now. There we go. We got a little bit that's stuck to the beaker. I'll get that off later. I'm going to take this now, put it over on the melt table, and start melting our pure gold. Okay, I'm out melting the gold that we just refined, but I've got a couple of more bars here that I'll be sending in with that. What I'd like to do is melt it up with this batch. So I'll be adding 119.8 grams of pure gold to this melt. That way we can calculate how much the yield is from the batch that we just refined.
All right, here is our beautiful pure gold bar. Pure gold. What a sight to behold. Let's put it on a scale here and see what we got. We've got 238.5 grams. That's 7.6 troy ounces of pure gold. And remember, everybody, 90% of refining is 50% mental. Here's our bar of pure gold. Uh, what we're going to do now is I'm going to call the big refiner that I deal with. And we're going to sell him this bar of gold, 238.5 grams. Here we go. I'm going to call him right now. Doing good, man. I'm uh, recording this conversation. I intend to publish it in a YouTube video later on. Is that okay? That's not a problem at all. All right. I'd like to uh, lock in some metal with you. I've got some pure gold here. What do you got for spot gold? I got 182550. 182550. All right. I'll be sending in 238. 0.5 grams of 24K pure gold. 238.5. Perfect. We have you locked in, sir. All right. Can I ask you just a couple questions right quick? No problem. What you got? Uh, what's the name of your company there? We are ARA Gold. A out of Dallas, Texas. ARA Gold out of Dallas, Texas. All right. If uh, some of my subscribers would like to sell their gold to you, what would they have to do in order to make that happen? Well, it just depends. Um, they're a business or an LLC. We'd uh, require a business tax ID to get them set up. Um, okay. And then they just uh, give us some basic contact info, um, whether they're a pawnbroker or a jeweler or metal detectorist, you know, whoever. Gotcha. Um, and the, yeah, and it's a pretty easy process. You know, it takes about five to ten minutes to get you an account set up to where you can proceed. Oh. Five all right, that sounds good. And what kind of material can be sent in? Gold, silver, palladium, platinum, diamonds. I mean, any precious metal. It doesn't... I mean, rhodium if you have it, but I mean, it's been pretty scarce here. I hear you. Now, can they send in carrot scrap and sterling silver pieces without refining them first? Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah send it as is. We'll do all the hard work. Have you lifted for you. That sounds good. And what is your payout? What what percentage do you pay out on the material? Well, if it's a business account, it'll be 98% for gold. Okay. 98 and a half for 10 to 20 ounces fine contained. And then 99% uh, for 20 ounces and up. So right. the more you send, the better your rates are. I got you. All right. And what form of payout? How do you pay out? We can either do a bank wire or a check, or if we have any uh, bullion, we can do a bullion swap, and uh, we'll just, you know, send you back some Krugerrands, maple, or whatever you want. All right, good deal, man. And uh, is it okay to give out your contact info? For example, publish your phone number and or email address for my subscribers to uh, get in touch with you. Yeah, please do. I'd be happy to hear from them. All right, man. All right, that'll do it, JC, man. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Oh, you're very welcome, Kevin. Anytime, sir. Have a good day, sir. Thank you. You too. Bye. Okay, this will wrap this video up. We've got a bar here that weighs 238.5 grams. I was expecting a yield of 121.4 grams, and the actual yield was 118.7 grams. That's how much gold we yielded from this refining and uh, now the information about uh, the big refiner that I send to uh, the fellow's name there at the point of contact is JC and that's ARA gold out of Dallas Texas and uh, if you want to send in some metal the best way to do it that I have found is on their website ARA gold you can download a sheet and fill it out to go along with your metal 
when you send it in to them. I've dealt with them for a couple years and they do a good job and they've always treated me right. As far as shipping your metal to ARA or whatever refiner that you choose, the best service that I've found is USPS Registered Priority Mail. It is the least expensive way and the most secure way that I've found to ship your precious metals. Okay, this will conclude this video. I want to thank everyone for watching. Thank you.